Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Haven tent slash hammock system. So let's get right into it. All right, so getting started with the Haven tent, this is a product that has been out for a little while now, and many of you probably saw the Kickstarter on this and may be a little familiar with it. Uh, basically, it is a flat lay hammock and a ground tent built into one system. So let's unpack all of this and see what it comes with. Right off the bat, we do have a very interesting stuff sack design. So the sleeping pad is kind of coupled to the tent and I have the rain fly on the outside. This rain fly does fit inside of the stuff sack, but I like carrying it just like this. That way, if it is raining, I can grab the rain fly and set that up without getting everything wet or having to dig through all of this just to get to the rain fly. So this bag is coupled with two buckle snaps just like that. We can open it and roll it open. As I mentioned, we do have a rain fly. Now my current version is in camouflage and green, so my rain fly is camouflage. We also have the Haven insulated sleeping pad. And then we have the actual stuff sack with the hammock inside of it. So let's open this up and see what we have. I've got a bag full of pegs, guy out lines, and spreader poles. So I'm just gonna dump all the stuff out on the table and we'll have a closer look at it once I get everything out. We do have the actual hammock body right here. So this is very nicely bound with a snap closure, very easy to pack away. And I actually like the form factor of it quite a bit. So we have that, we have a spreader pole, we have two spreader poles, and I even have the whoopee sling. So I'm just gonna fan all this out on the table and we can have a really close look at what the Haven tent comes with. Okay, so having a close look at some of the components with the Haven tent, here I do have some green whoopee slings coupled with a carabiner. Of course, we do have two of those. We then have four aluminum stakes, which are very useful for pinning out the tarp and setting up the shelter as a tent on the ground. We then have four additional guy lines. Now these do have adjusters built into them, so you can tension it down, and these are reflective, so you can see it in the dark. We have two tree straps, which go with the whoopee sling. So you wrap this around the tree and then click in your whoopee sling. We then have two collapsible poles. These are the spreader poles. They simply click together with shock cord. And this is basically what gives the hammock tent its structure. We then have the insulated air pads. Now you can get a non-insulated version. This one, of course, is the insulated version. We have the rain fly with a lot of reinforcements here. And as I stated, this is the camouflage version. So it is a little bit more concealed in the forest. And then we have the actual hammock body, which is still bound in this compression strap. So after looking at some of the components here, I will mention that some of these items are add on items. So for example, you don't have to get the whoopee slings. You can actually use the tree straps or you can use other branded tree straps or maybe you already have a hammock set up and you just wanna use the straps instead of getting into a whoopee sling setup. You can do that as well. So some of these items are additional items. One of those additional items is the pump. So this is from Haven and it's actually quite useful. At first, I wasn't sure if I was actually gonna use this this thing is incredible. So it's basically just a pump. It comes with a ton of different fittings. So it will fit on all kinds of air pads. It is USB-C charge. It does come with the cable. And like I said, a whole bunch of different fittings. So you can fit this on various sleeping pads from many brands. It also inflates and deflates. So you can actually pop this on the deflate setting and turn it on and it will suck the air out of your sleeping pad while you're packing away other pieces of gear if that's interesting to you. Now it is a little bit noisy. But this thing inflates the sleeping pad incredibly fast. So if you are wanting to set up really quick, the air pump is available. The sleeping pad itself does have a pump sack fitting on the end of it. So you can inflate with the pump sack or the air pump. And this also doubles as a battery bank. So you can actually plug into this and charge a cell phone or a headlamp if you want to spare a little bit of battery power. So that is another additional item. One that I'm actually very happy with because like I said, it fits on all of my air pads with all the additional fittings. I can plug it in, pump up the pad very quickly, and it's not very heavy either. So 
let's cover some of the specs with the Haven system. All right, guys, so let's get into the specs. I have the current listing off of Haven.com on my cell phone. I'm just gonna read off some of these specs to you guys. So for the hammock system, it measures 78 inches or two meters long, and the width is 24 inches or 60 centimeters wide. The total weight with the pad is six pounds, 15 ounces, coming in at 3.14 kilograms. So that's absolutely everything, including the insulated pad. And it is a 129 kilogram or 285 max weight bearing system. So it's not going to hold a whole lot of weight, but 285 pounds is quite a bit of weight to be supporting in this, I will say. So just pay attention to that max weight capacity when purchasing this because it's not as high as other systems on the market. However, it is still quite high. It has a 300 or 3000 millimeter hydrostatic head rating and it is made with a 70 ripstop polyurethane material. That is for the hammock system. Now let's talk about the sleeping pad. If I could just punch out of here, I'll move over to the sleeping pad. So the sleeping pad does have some information on the outside of the stuff sack. I'm just going to read it off to you guys right here. So it has an R value of four that is non ASTM verified as far as I can see. But this air pad is actually very warm laying on this compared to my other pads in my collection. I can still feel the heat building underneath of this, even in cold climates. So R value of four, the length is 78 inches, also known as two meters long. The width is 23 inches, also known as 59 centimeters. The weight is two pounds, also known as 900 grams. The packed size, so as you see it right now, is 13 by five inches, also known as 33 by 12 centimeters. The material is a 40D ripstop nylon. Now, there is one thing that I just noticed. The outside of the stuff sack says 24 inches by 78 inches, and it is four inches thick for all you wondering. Um, and here it says it's 23 inches wide. It's actually 24. So there is a little bit of a difference there with the, uh, the specs. Moving on to the Rainfly. The Rainfly, there are two versions. So there is a 20D ripstop and there is a 70D ripstop. I'm going to give you guys the specs for both. The 70D ripstop is a 3000 millimeter waterproof rating. It weighs one pound and that is known as 453 grams. The 20D ripstop is a 4,000 millimeter waterproof rating and it weighs 0.75 of a pound, which is known as 340 grams. So now that we got the specs out of the way, I think it's about time we set the hammock up. I have two trees picked out. I'm gonna move the whole system over there, get it set up and show you guys what it looks like. Okay guys, so I've got the Haven hammock system set up here. It's not exactly totally set up, but I do wanna show this portion. I have the carabiner on the end of the hammock and that is connected into the whoopee sling. The whoopee sling is then connected to the tree strap. I'm now just gonna tension the whoopee sling, raising the hammock up off of the ground. Very simple by pulling in on the whoopee sling. So here's a close up view. I'm just gonna pull this tag end through this section and that is going to raise the hammock up off of the ground really nice and tight and then stretch that out to lock it in. So after I've got the hammock up off the ground quite high, and I'm gonna show you just how high it is when I move back with the camera, but at this stage, I like to get both spreader poles placed inside. So to do that, we'll unzip the zipper all the way and there are pockets sewn into the side of the hammock. So these little black pockets here actually hold the poles and that's gonna give the hammock body. So it's actually gonna spread these side walls apart giving the shape to the hammock. So I'm just gonna slide these into the corresponding pockets. There's one for both ends of the hammock, one for the head end and one for the foot end. All right, so now that I have the Haven hammock strung up and it is very, very high, it is gonna come down once we get some body weight inside of it. But I do wanna point out how flat it is. So you'll notice that it is level all the way across. That is very important for this to work properly. Now we're going to inflate the sleeping pad. There are two ways of doing this. You can use the provided pump sack, which works really well. It takes about 15 to 20 pump sack holes to actually fully inflate the air pad. However, for today's purpose, we're gonna use the pump and it works very, very quickly. Like I said, it is a little noisy, but it works very fast. So give you guys a look at this.
and within 15 to 20 seconds your entire air pad is inflated. Now I do recommend topping it off with the stuff sack just to give it a little bit more pressure as the air pump will not over pressurize so there's no chance of exploding your sleeping pad while using this but it is a very very handy tool so pop that off to the side we're going to get the sleeping pad topped off with the pump sack and then I'm just going to slide it inside of the hammock and show you guys how that sits in there all right so now that I have the haven pad fully inflated I just want to point out here in the corner every corner has one of these green kind of stitched in corners the pad slides underneath of these and that holds the pad totally secure inside of the hammock so having a look at the outside of the haven you'll notice that it is a very large u-shaped door this door exists on both sides of the hammock and it is totally removable so if you do want to remove the bug net all you have to do is come down to one end remove this snap undo the zipper and follow the zipper all the way down and it comes 100 percent off so from here you can actually take the entire bug net off of the hammock kind of pull on that and now we have a total open hammock if you are in the winter time or the fall or maybe bugs are not an issue on where you're camping this is an excellent system for having freedom now i will caution you be careful where these cuts are very very low on the zipper that your sleeping bag does not fall out into the snow. That's very simple to keep inside just by kicking it down to one end, either the head end or the foot end where it has these raised walls. And then when you crawl in, you can then put your insulation on top. So having a close look inside of the Haven, you'll notice that there is a very large pocket up here at the head end or the foot end. I do have the pump sitting inside of it right now. We then have a short and wide kind of pocket on this side. And then on this side closest to my body, we have a long and narrow pocket which holds cell phones very nicely. We also have the spreader pole up here which you can hang gear on top of. These pockets exist on both ends of the hammock. At the foot end, you can see this long kind of narrow pocket that I was referring to for a cell phone. And then we do have the other pockets which are identical. So there are six pockets total inside of the Haven. All right, now that we've seen a bit of the outside and the inside of the hammock, now I'm going to show you guys how to get in. As I said, it is pitched very high and very flat. However, that will go down once you get into it. And depending on how far your trees are positioned apart will dictate how much sag is going to be in the hammock. Very easy to get in. I hold this top strap up here, which is webbing. It's very, very strong. And simply kind of push this under your butt and slide into the hammock. Now this is sitting mode right here. You'll notice it did go down a fair bit and it's very easy to get in and out of, but it does require a little bit of practice. So once you're in the sitting formation, you can then choose which end you want your head or your foot end to be. I'm gonna put my head up towards this end, my feet down towards that end. And basically I'm just gonna span out my body weight and you'll notice it will go very, very flat, very simple. So just keeping your hand on this webbing up here, it's very strong. And you can position your body wherever you like. So this right here feels fairly comfortable. I'm nice and flat. And I can feel the heat coming through the air pad already where it is insulated. Alright, so now that we've taken a look inside of the hammock and you guys can get an idea of how to lay inside of it. There is a ton of room in here. You can even hang your backpack in here. Often what I'll do is hang my backpack on the strap and kick it down towards the foot end. I'll use two of these poles inside for draping my sweater over top or hanging on a lantern or whatever you need to do plus all of the pockets. There is a ton of room inside of the shelter making it very comfortable. Now we do have the rain fly. We're going to span this out across the shelter show you guys what it looks like. I've already got one end clicked onto the carabiner. Now this system is kind of interesting because it has this reinforced portion and it does have two holes inside of it. So you can actually choose to click this over the ridge line or over the strap using the carabiner. The carabiner will simply go through the two holes or you could choose to use the loop on the very end like I have today. I've just got that clicked onto the carabiner, very simple. I'm gonna run this to the other end, add the guy lines and get it pitched for a nice rainy day kind of scenario. And then I'm gonna show you a couple of different options with some interesting toggles that are placed on the hammock that really help to batten this down for storm mode. All right, so having a really close look at this tarp system here, as I was stating, you can pass these two holes through the carabiner system. 
and that'll stay on there just like that. Or you can use this additional black loop here. Just wanted to show this so you guys understand how that works. All right, guys, so here we have the rain fly attached to the Haven tent, and you can see I've got it more in an open porch configuration. So if it were raining, I could lay inside of here and be protected from the rain, or if it was winter and we had some snow, I could lay in here and still be protected from the elements and still have this awesome view from inside of the hammock. Now I will mention the outer walls of this tent is waterproofed. Even the bottom is seam taped. So where it is a smaller rain fly, and it does have a trick up its sleeve, which I'm gonna show you very shortly. Even if you do have some blowing rain, it will not get inside of the tent at the head end or the foot end. So working our way over to one end of the hammock, I just wanna show this angle so you guys can get a real kind of, a, a good look at the tarp system because it is a kind of a, a hex fly. It's not really a rectangular tarp. It does have cuts on the side that make it kind of a hex shape. But on this side, I have it pitched more down towards the ground. And then on the door working side, I have it pitched open to be an open configuration so I can still see outside. You have the option to completely close it up or to completely open it up, which is really nice with this system. So let's talk about storm mode. So on all four corners at the base of the tent, there are these loops and toggle system. Now these loops typically this is how you would stake it out to the ground as a ground tent, but these toggles is what I want to talk about right now. These correspond with the fly, tying the fly in to the hammock system, creating a storm shelter. At the central point of the zipper on the hammock body, we then have this piece of shock cord loop, which also corresponds with the rain fly. Underneath of the tarp, we can then see this plastic hook on the strapping material. This corresponds with that central bungee cord on the hammock body. So when you're ready to lock the Haven down into storm mode, whether you're inside or outside, simply come over to the rain fly. Remember that plastic hook I was talking about? You can snap that in to the bungee system on the center point of the hammock. And then coming to either end of the hammock, we can take those black toggles and pass them through some grommets that are placed in the rain fly at either end. And that will secure the rain fly down for storm mode. That way you're basically in a pod system. Now remember the head end and the foot end are open, but they are water treated. All right, so coming to one end of the hammock, I wanna show this side towards me is in storm mode. The other side is still pinned open with the guy lines. This entire end and the other end is totally water treated. The bottom seam is seam taped and we do have a little hood up top with a little mesh panel. So there is ventilation that can still circulate in. One thing I do want to mention right now, it looks like it's rather loose because there's no body weight inside of it. But if I were to pull down on the hammock, you can see how this all went really nice and tight. So when you're inside of here with your body weight, this creates a nice tight rain shield. Now, one more addition while in storm mode, if you do wish to have the studs pulled out a little bit more to introduce a lot more airflow and to have a little bit of a view of the ground just to make it feel less claustrophobic, you can detach this center point and guy it out to the ground. So keep in mind, once the body weight's in there, these wrinkles do disappear because the head end and the foot end will be level and pushed down. But you can guide the tarp out from here to create a little bit more of a working space inside. To exit storm mode, just do the opposite. Release the toggle systems. Very simple, that's released. The center point's released. Come down to this end, release this point. And then you can throw the tarp up over top if you like. We've got the screen closure and it just makes for a really, really interesting system, especially the flat lay capabilities with this webbing strap up top being very, very strong. You can hang your entire backpack inside of here so there's nothing on the ground getting wet. And you're basically hanging in the air in a flat configuration. Very nice and comfortable and I really like it. So I'm gonna get this taken down out of the tree. We're gonna set it up on the ground as a ground tent. So I'll show you guys what that looks like really briefly. And then we're gonna go into the final thoughts portion of this video. Okay guys, so with a simple tweak of the system, I am currently still attached to the trees. However, we're now on the ground in a ground tent configuration. The rain fly still works with this configuration and it works very well, creating two very large vestibules on either side of the tent. However, it's really difficult to show everything on camera with that position, so I've gone ahead and taken it off for today's demonstration. However, you guys can see, it is a very, very unique shelter where you can hang it in the tree or pitch it on the ground, making this a very versatile shelter with the air pad included to basically go hiking, go on a trail, and not know where you're going to sleep. If you have trees, use them. If you don't have trees, sleep on the ground, or if you don't have a flat spot on the ground, 
hang it in the trees, and you've got a pretty unique system. All right, guys, final thoughts on the Haven system. What do I think? The answer is I love it. It works really, really great. It is basically two shelters in one. You're buying a tent and a hammock all in one, which is awesome. I love it. The form factor is really not that bad. This is very comparable to a hammock setup and a tent setup all in one. You get the pad. I have the insulated version, which is excellent for winter time. And it just makes a really comfortable camp. Honestly, I could pitch it on the ground if I feel, or I could pitch it in the tree. So if I'm hiking a new trail or I'm in a new area, or perhaps I'm doing a multi-night adventure, and I know one night is perfect location for a hammock and the next location is perfect for a tent, or let's say someone's already in the tent spot and I have to put this in the trees. And basically that there's no flat ground. So there's a lot of scenarios that we could think of where this would be beneficial. And for me, this just works. It works really well. I love how I can put all my gear inside of it. I love how it's not very big in, in size. It sets up very easy. It just works. So the Haven tent, two thumbs up for me, guys. If there are any questions or comments that you do have and I did not touch on something, drop it down in the comment section. I'll do my best to, uh, to answer that for you. But for now, this is all that I have for you. The Haven system is definitely two thumbs up for me. I do really enjoy it. Peace out, guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.